This is a very small group of quite particular banded agate. They are called bacon agate. And in our scheme, I had a few um, class here for this last uh, kind of agate. And uh, mm, the chalcedony without inclusion are a composite of two groups, the colored chalcedony and the bacon agate, that are both the result of transformation of primary opal. So all of this, of those are um, chalcedony concretion that give uh, the production of uh, uh, wide mm, uh, groups, uh, range of groups of uh, different kind of agates. And these are the two small group that are result not from primary chalcedony, but kind of secondary chalcedony that is transformed from a primary opal. Then and there is uh, the group of lace agate we talk in another chapters, and they are quite similar to bacon agate, but we saw that they are the result of two uh, main uh, mm, solutions. One that is responsible for the formation of chalcedony bands, and the other that is responsible of the alternating other crystals, other minerals like uh, amethyst quartz, calcite, uh, and aragonite. So, uh, bacon agate are very similar to lace agate, and they are not really in vain, so there is never uh, a symmetric. Mm, pattern with between both sides like in in uh, lace agate agate and they are often a uh, big mass or um, mo small uh, set of bands altogether S the bands are uh, characterized by um, shape very shaky and uh, there is never other minerals inside there is not layers of calcite, aragonite, or amethyst. And uh, it's quite rare to find quartz inside. So um, in many cases, mm, this material are, are called by Lapidary and by Rockhounder as lace agate, but we, we want to differentiate strongly these two groups because the origin, the origin is quite different. Uh, some of bacon agate can have inside some small inclusion of um, foreign object like a piece of rock, some piece of plants or wood or any kind of stuff that I is quite unused to be inside, but not crystals. Uh, it's like some powder, uh, some orga organic matter piece. And the the shape of the uh, of the bands is quite moved. In some cases, they they look more botroidal than a uh, fortified agate, so with some pinnacle, and then the um, the color can be very colorful. And in some cases, there is recrystallization, sec secondary recrystallization, like this portion of uh, clear calcedony. But most of the, the part of this cabochon is made of irregular banded, very shaky. This is another, uh, another deposit uh, near McDermott in southern Oregon called Mystic Crazy Lace. It's a kind of a crazy lace, but it's not a lace, it's bacon, and we see the shape of the bands is the same. And this is another deposit from Mexico, purple color. And there is some constant character of the shape of the bands. This is another material from Ida. Also, this is called lace, but it's a bacon. So we found um, an opal with the same structure. We can call it bacon opal. Actually, uh, in the mine, it's called banded opal or candy opal, but I want to call it bacon opal for mm, make stronger the analogy and uh, uh, the most important analogy is the shape the shaky shape of the bands the alternating of different color but without quartz without different inclusion 
uh, there is a kind of constant composition. So we know this kind of opal is the result of uh, hydrothermal vent. So is something produced near a geyser or near a uh, hot spring. So this have the same structure and the same origin of the travertine. Travertine, this is the famous travertine from Rome, Italy, that was used to build the Imperial Rome. And uh, um, this is uh, produced uh, from hot spring near the, the, the town of Rome and the hot spring that uh, proud uh, uh, water, hot water in a vast uh, area and uh, mm, from the, the hot solution uh, this is uh, the is carbonate precipita precipitation. So uh, the bacon opal is formed in, s in the same way. So um, we have an hot springs or a geyser that uh, uh, make, make in put in circulation hot fluid very rich in silica and when the water cool and become cold uh, what is in solution precipitate like uh, mm, botroidal material that is called silica sinter this silica sinter is a kind of powdery amorphous material that is a kind of Morphous opal mm. and uh, is formed uh, all around all the geyser and the hot springs. Um, this, uh, for the people that are not so familiar with a uh, geothermal, hydrothermal cycle, I want to repeat here, and this the same process that was responsible for the hydrothermal portion of the uh, bacon agate. So the one that was responsible of the crystallization of the other mineral, the quartz or the calcite mineral. And uh, this is the process responsible for all the hydrothermal minerals, like many or body deposit, mm, quartz, vein, and so on. So the, the cycle is, um, there is an area where uh, rain is abundant, the, the water go inside the rock in, in a in a reservoir and uh, uh, move until it reach uh, an area that is more heated by a uh, magma chamber. We are in a volcanic area. So here the water heat and go up and um, going up because it's hot, dissolve the silica from the hot rock, from the volcanic rock, so become super saturated in silica. And during its ascent, the water cool, loads lithostatic load, so loads lose pressure, and uh, when the the water arrive in the surface near the hot springs, um, the silica precipitated suddenly. So here is the place where the silica sinter is deposited. This happens uh, in natural uh, springs or in geothermal well. If we make a geothermal power plant for use the uh, natural uh, heat of the of the area uh, e they have the problem in the plant to avoid the precipitation of the silica sinter so this process is uh, a high temperature process respect of the um, the formation of the normal nodular and vein agate and have nothing to do with the formation of banded agate or other type of chalcedony with inclusion. So it is possible that mm, the different ambient make a little bit different the chalcedony but e, e, e just the different are in the shape and the, in the pattern of the bands. This is how um, look a uh, silica sinter in formation near a hot spring. We are here in New Zealand, and we see that the mm, uh, the, the area where hot water uh, uh, arrive in surface make a very 
thick amount of silica sinter and then the water go making a pond, a pond and all the pond is rich in precipitated by the the hot water so this is producing a vast deposit of opal and uh, the si same uh, silica sinter are precipitated in pipes in the geothermal power station so we we see this is a sketch map of a power station that uh, take the hot water from from the depth use it for move the the power station make electricity and then they uh, reinject or just trash the water in, in nature so there is many place where um, the water pass from narrow mm, pipe to a big mm, deposit or a big tank where uh, the silica is deposited there is one place here one here one here one here and then other mm, calcite or sulfide or sulfur are deposited in different place so is well known from people that take care of the thermal power station where is this it is possible that and it is more common that silica uh, sinter that is called this case in this case is called silica scale they are more common to be deposited so this because um, power station geothermal power station are mm -hmm. built in volcanic area that is where there is a uh, source of heat and where there is a magma chamber in the in the near depth so I, I, is this the same place where uh, a big amount of silica is in circulation so it's more common to find um, fluid that are uh, enriched in silica instead that enriched in carbonates or other uh, minerals so um, when the fluid arrive in the surface what happen in the hot springs in nature happen in the power station if we take the 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 solution and use it for produce energy so what is the uh, the prevention uh, that are used for from people that take care of power station so the only prevention is to remain under the solub solubility curve of the amorphous opal so um, we see this is um, um, a curve of solu solubility of the main uh, silica phase quartz and chalcedony are not so important they are very low solubility in our range of temperature and in our zone of stability this is the zone of stability of normal agate and we are mm, hot spring are near here but um, in this case we are we can have pressure so we have more temperature so we are near here this is the area in the pipes so um, if the solution uh, pass on the other side of the uh, solubility of amorphous silica uh, there is uh, very fast precipitation of scale of silica scale so um, we saw that quartz and chalcedony are not important but amorphous silicas that is opal uh, is quite important in uh, scaling in the production of incrustation in pipes so uh, the only prevention is to keep the pem temperature enough low to be always under this this curve but uh, if the solution uh, reach this area is a question of minutes or few hour to uh, precipitate fast uh, scale of silica and this scale can uh, completely obstruct the pipes. 
No, in nature, this is important because when um, when uh, solution decrease in temperature and decrease in pressure, they uh, decrease uh, the temperature fastly, and we are probably in this area. So when they each surface, uh, we are at this point around 100 degree. That is the uh, maximum mm, temperature of water at uh, uh, le surface level. So the decreasing in temperature provoke the uh, sudden precipitation of the amorphous silica. So this is what happened in the formation of the bacon opal. And uh, we, mm, we imagine that the, the bacon opal is the precursor of the bacon agar. So we see that the structure is exactly the same, with the band very shaky, in, the, in, uh, in a way quite different than in band agate, and also different from lace agate, because um, there is never quartz inside here. So each new supply of, wa of water is responsible to the, the outpouring of some water hot water and the, the precipitation of one more or less botroidal uh, sheet of chalcedony uh, while the, this solution is cooling. So uh, they are formed in open space, so it's often possible to include a small rock fragment, a small piece of vegetable. So that sometimes there is a piece of something in the stratification and there is a uh, no uh, seasonal cycle like in uh, banded agate and like in uh, lace agate so the cycle here are depending only on the spring activity so sometimes the spring activity is depending on the uh, the weather but sometimes there is a more complex equilibrium between weather and the heating source and the, the, the evolution of the springs. So in the same way as we suppose uh, that opal was the precursor of chalcedony in colored uh, chalcedony without inclusion, we suppose also that this is the source of bacon opal. So we have two, um, two reactions uh, that uh, demonstrate the instability of the opal in the geological record and this, uh, the, its transformation in jasper and more, more water and its transformation in chalcedony. The amorphous opal of organogenic origin is mm, first transformed in opal CT and then it is transformed in jasper in all the case that we saw, like on the oceanic jasper, flint, and some case in petrified wood, and in many other cases. And this is a reaction that uh, vast water and uh, produce jasper that is more crystalline and have more less water inside. So the same reaction is from opal cité, because in this case is primary opal precipitated from solution. It's not amorphous opal, it's a little bit more crystalline than amorphous opal. And uh, this is mm, mm, transformed in chalcedony more water, because also the chalcedony is more crystalline and contain less water than opal. Mm, obviously, also opal A, opal amorphous, is sometimes found in mm, primary opal in deposit, uh, in vein or in books or in uh, hot springs, but this is probably the most abundant. So mm, we saw also that um, there is a big group of jasper that are formed from the devetrification of volcanic glass because also the volcanic glass are unstable uh, in geological time at uh, uh, surface uh, condition but um, we can say that opal because is amorphous 
is technically a kind of glass and also for this reason is an unstable material so glass is really unstable because um, matter uh, materials tend to be more crystalline more uh, ordered so uh, we have the tendency of opal that is a, a disordered material to uh, become more ordered and more stable in nature and uh, it can transform in the two main uh, silica phase uh, microcrystalline phase of silica that are jasper and chalcedony depending on its pH condition depending on the chemistry of the uh, condition of the water so uh, these two reactions are both common both uh, possible and just depend from different pH condition of the geochemistry of the environment where opal is found.